Okay, so we talked about the types of perms. That was one of my favorite sections of the book. Um, I just want to add a few more notes with the thiofree perm. So they say you can have two chemicals, cysteamine and mercaptamine. Mercaptamine? I did my own research and I remember finding that mercaptamines are technically, they have something to be related with mercury. It's a really weird area. Once you actually do your own research on this, it's pretty eye-opening and pretty cool. I have not found anything that uses mercaptamine. If you know anything that does, let me know down below if you're a chemist or anything because I'd like to know like what its purpose is, why you would use it, is it different than cystamine? But I will say that about 90% or 99% of your thiofree waves are all gonna be cystamine at various levels. Some of them um, you're supposed to use with special rods. I know the Pravana body wave, use it with the blocks. Thiofree waves are great for today's modern person. That's what the American wave is made out of. They actually have um, less odor. I find they smell a lot better than ammonia free waves actually because there's no thio and what you're smelling is just the ammonia. Now, if you have the ammonia and thio free wave like the Paul Mitchell line, that may smell like dead chicken. It smells really gross. It smells like chicken soup gone bad. So it may ruin that for you. But no, there is still an odor associated with it and that when you're working on the hair, you're gonna release some gas from the hair and that will also smell when you take it off. Um, again, it's the smell of money, that's what I always say. They also give you a caution note and actually tested this out. They say mixing, accidentally mixing the contents of an activator tube with a neutralizer instead of the waving lotion will cause a violent chemical reaction that can cause injury, especially to the eyes. This is interesting because I wonder if this was written at a time when the perms were a lot more alkaline and strong. I have done this um, just to see what happens and what you do is you create an exothermic reaction. Now, if you're watching Studio Lumo and they talk about the jerry curl and the uh, or the soft curl permanent, they'll tell you that if there's any traces of the thio or the perm left in the hair when you neutralize, what's gonna happen is you're gonna put that peroxide on, it's gonna react with the residues left in and it will cause a heat reaction that will cause damage to the hair. Now, if you mix this, I actually tried taking, so to prove that my point, I looked at what the activator was, it was peroxide poured it in a neutralizer bottle. I know I wasted a good perm, but you know, for the sake of science, it felt warm. I then took 50 volume developer, put it in there and I shook it up. It didn't even explode. It just got very, very hot and it burned. So that's always important to be aware of that. I know they do a similar chemistry with Zotos um, Warm and Gentle. They add a special thermalizer to your neutralizer, which reacts and it makes your peroxide neutralizer nice and warm, which um, not only helps it penetrate better, but it's relaxing for the client. So also know that the ingredients, strength, and pH of permanent wave solutions are different from manufacturers and they vary considerably, even within the same category. So you'll have one line that has an acid wave that's really a pH seven, another line, it's like a 4.5. Thio-free perms can range drastically. Even um, when we talk about thio relaxers, because they make thio smoothers, and they're, it's a perm, but in a cream form, and it smells like a perm, because it is a perm. So you have to put the solution on, rinse it out of the hair, and then neutralize. They make thio-free ones, and I like them. Thiofree is not damage free, but you have more wiggle room with other services. Thiofree perms are also um, compatible with bleach, high lifted hair, and more damaged hair because you're able to get away without swelling the hair like you would with a normal perm. So you want to also know the client's lifestyle. Know that when you're doing a perm, it's not going to be you do it once and you're good for, you know, forever. There is some kind of maintenance you have to do. So you're going to have to get, you know, a product line and all this. What you could do is start charging your clients a, uh, you know, not only consultation fee, but get, when you pay for the fee, they get like a deposit to get back for the consultation, right? If you're an expert in this. So you do their care consultation, you give them a product that come with the deposit if it's not refundable. And that teaches them like, this is how you gotta care for your hair after you perm it. You can't be using like head and shoulders after I give you a perm. You have to wait at least a day. I always say go the full three days without washing because it really sets that curl in. Know that with permanent waving, you're gonna get thio neutralizations. Thio neutralization stops the acting of the waving solution and it rebuilds the hair into the new curly form. Neutralization has two important functions and the first one I'm gonna say, use this for with a grain of salt. Just know this for your test. It says any waving solution that remains in the hair is deactivated, neutralized. Not true, it actually becomes exothermic. That is wrong, the book should change that. <laughs> and disulfide bonds that were broken by waving solution is rebuilt. That's the important thing. It's gonna normalize the pH of the hair so the hair can uh, reform to the curly shape. Now, people always talk about Olaplex, how to use it, this and that. If you've had me as a teacher, you will have the luxury knowing that I do not use Olaplex in my lightener. What I use Olaplex for is perms. If you put the Olaplex in your waving lotion, not in your waving lotion, don't put it in your waving lotion. If you put the Olaplex in your neutralizer and after you produce the perm, just putting that Olaplex in the neutralizer will give you the best perm you have ever had, ever. Or follow the directions and you can put it in the neutralizer because sometimes you, some stylists do that but read Olaplex's directions on the Olaplex perm, it's incredible. Um, know that the neutralizer and permanent waves are oxidizers, so they may lift hair. 
Some people claim the perm itself can lift hair, which may happen if you don't do it right and you have some residues left and you put the peroxide on, it could react with any ammonia and that can cause a lifting reaction. Peroxide alone can lighten hair. Some brands use a stronger peroxide. Most common neutralizer is gonna be hydrogen peroxide. Concentrations vary between five volume, which is also 1.5%, and 10 volume, 3%. If you over leave the neutralizer on, you will ruin your perm. You'll also cause the hair to feel like super hard and super brittle. You also can even lighten the hair and remove out old color. So the first stage of neutralization, um, the first function of permanent waving, thio neutralization, is deactivation or neutralization of any waving lotion. Chemical reaction involves called oxidation because you're putting oxygen back in the hair. That's also why um, when you don't use peroxide, you just leave the rods in. If you leave it in for a day, you'll have your hair neutralized without the peroxide. Properly rinsing the perm after, uh, will remove any perm solution prior to applying the neutralizer. Oxidative reactions can also lighten hair, especially at an alkaline pH. To avoid scalp irritation and unwanted lightening of hair color, always rinse perm solution for at least five minutes. Then blot the hair with towels to remove as much moisture as possible. Excess water left in the hair reduces the effectiveness of the neutralizer. So what I do is actually rinse well over the five minutes. I go more to seven to 10 minutes, make sure everything is rinsed off. Towel block carefully, and then I put them under a hood dryer, medium heat, get as much of the uh, water out as possible. And that also helps the hair um, really hold the curl because you're removing as much as possible. You're putting oxygen in, which may help with the neutralization phase. So make sure you the tips. You always want to use warm water. Use common sense. Don't use boiling hot water. Don't use freezing cold water because it's going to be uncomfortable and it's not going to take off the um, solution. Don't apply high pressure, high water with a high stream because what's going to happen is the pressure of the beams of water shooting out can actually snap right through the hair if it's damaged. Also know that when you feel it, even healthier, it might feel a little mushy when you do the perm because you're softening it with the alkali. Always check the nape area. That's always the hardest area to shoot the water under. So what I do with the perm is I always start from up here. That way I'm rinsing everything down. And as here is um, clean, um, back here might have a little bit more. I'm able to get it all out. If you start rinsing back here and then you go up here, you're going to push any waving lotion residues on this over here. So you always want to rinse for the time recommended by the manufacturer. It's usually five minutes. But you also want to make sure you smell the hair. I know that sounds kind of weird and your clients may be like, why do you smell my hair for? And explain to them, I have to make sure I got all of it out. If you still have a faint odor of perm, keep rinsing. Make sure you do it until there is hardly even a faint odor left. Always blot the hair with a dry towel. Um, don't firmly or aggressively blot the hair. They make special perm paper. You can like go in, blot, 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 blot. Do it again until the towel runs um, dry. Always check for excess moisture. It usually is the neck where you get it because everything goes backwards with water. You want to adjust any rods to become loose or have drifted out of alignment before you apply the neutralizer because you'll form them in the correct shape. Nothing is worse than having a rod snap while you're perming it, which is the scariest experience ever. Um, in that case, teamwork helps have someone hold it or try to quickly switch it out and roll it. That way it still will hold that shape. So some manufacturers also make a pre-neutralizing conditioner. I have not seen one. So what this is, it's an acidic liquid protein conditioner and you apply it to a hair and you dry it under a warm hood dryer. Hair is left uncovered for five minutes or more prior to neutralizing. The added step helps very damaged hair because it strengthens the hair prior to neutralizing, it fills in those cracks again that are in the hair. So the second stage of thio neutralization, uh, it breaks the permanent wave solution breaks disulfan binds. We learned that now the um, neutralizer is going to rebond them. So that's what's going to happen chemically. It's going to use oxygen to join those um, bonds back together. Side bonds are reformed into new shape and pairs. So we have some different procedures. What we do is um, test curls. They help you determine how your client will react to a perm. Typically, we don't always use them, but they tell you how to do them anyway if you're curious. Um, it's really good if you're really sure, unsure if the hair has metallic salts or what in them. You're going to prep the hair. I always recommend too, doing a mineral removing treatment such as a special chelating treatment like Malibu C. Get any mineral buildup off the hair before you perm it because it will really help the curls last. So you'll do the test curls and they have a thing you'll do them in a different area and it will tell you what the timing is. The hard part when you're doing test curls is you have that one area you don't want to get waving lotion on so then you got to saturate it with conditioner. That's why not many people do that. Typically you do one test curl if you're curious in the real world of what's in their hair or how it will react. 
Also, the client knows. If clients had a perm before, you can actually figure out what went wrong, explain like what what, the, what was the perm like, was the perm feel warm, that can help you gauge what was used because they don't know these technical terms. So if they say, well, the perm felt kind of warm when it was on my head, chances are it was an exothermic uh, wave. And if they said, oh, it was too warm and the curls, um, you know, they were too firm, then you want to use something lower. And then if they said, oh, my hair didn't take really well, then that could be because the hair was damaged or they used the wrong kind of perm. So know that with the perm, there are... Oh, I also forgot to mention this. Oh my goodness, I missed a whole section. Sorry about that. So um, we're gonna backtrack this a little bit. We talked about neutralization. So now we're gonna talk about the overall processing time. So what we're going to do is, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what? yeah, I'm gonna go through with this. <laughs> yeah, I might as well. So we talked about how neutralization works, right? So now we're gonna talk about actually processing the hair. So know that the strength of any permanent wave is based on the concentration of the reducing agent. Um, in turn, the amount of processing is determined by the strength of the permanent wave solution. If a weak permanent wave solution is used on coarse hair, there may not be enough hydrogen ions to break the necessary number of disulfide bonds, no matter how long it processes. I'll argue this and say if you use a low perm, just keep processing and processing it longer. The longer you process, eventually you will get there to where you have to unravel it, maybe up to 30 minutes or longer. In rare cases, that happens. Your book gives you this wonderful chart. Um, it's actually a right skewed graph. And it tells you that a majority of the magic happens between five to 10 minutes of processing. Everything else is an outlier. So typically there are some people that may need the full on 30 minutes or longer of processing. Very few people do. Most people need about five to 10 minutes of processing. 15 minutes might happen. So what you have to do is, what they'll say is a lot of the processing happens within five to 10 minutes when it penetrates the hair. Additional processing time allows the polypeptide chains to shift in a new configuration. And if you find that your client's hair has been overprocessed, it probably happened within the first five minutes to 10 minutes of the service, and a weaker permanent wave solution should have been used. If the hair is not sufficiently processed after 10 minutes, it may acquire, require reapplication of waving solution. Resistant hair requires a stronger solution, higher in pH, and a more thorough saturation. Thorough saturation of hair is essential to proper processing in all permanent waves, especially those applied on resistant hair. Also know that for thicker hair and resistant hair, it may not be completely saturated with one application of waving lotion. You might have to use two boxes. Typically, if you're doing a spiral perm, you'll need to. You may need to apply the solution slowly and repeatedly until the hair looks wet and stays wet. So you don't want the hair dripping. You have to apply it in a special manner. Typically, when you're processing a perm, what you want to do is apply it from the back and then work your way up. This hair back here is always thicker and more resistant than this hair up here. So what happens is if you apply it back here and this back is already done, what you can do is start to rinse this back. Now, if they have this is being done and this isn't done yet, it's challenging to rinse this effectively. So typically what's gonna happen is you're gonna start applying back here. So what you're gonna do is, I don't even have a perm bottle, but if this is my um, perm rod, what I'm gonna do is one, two, turn it up if it's a crocodile wrap, three, a lady, one, two, three times a lady, 80 song. Try to be funny. <laughs> But anyhow, one, two, and three. Do that for each perm rod. Make sure you are careful to saturate each one. I had a friend who made that mistake of not saturating that effectively, and she actually had a whole client that was missing an entire panel of processing. She missed a whole section. Guess what? The salon had to eat the bill for that. They had to put that in one area and very carefully process it. It was a really big pain in the butt, but that's why you gotta be careful. Um, when in doubt, you can actually gently smell a rod. If it smells um, doesn't smell bad, typically you might want to saturate a little bit more. So after you do the saturation, what I do is I go back and I give it one squirt if there's any left. Sometimes the hair can absorb it in. You can also take it and give it a shoot inside the rods if it has a little hole in it. If not, just um, try to carefully get it. And now on very thick hair, if you're not using the piggyback wrap, which we'll talk about in our next segment, you run the risk of not fully saturating and you can get under processing. So you have overprocessed hair and underprocessed hair. And this actually fits in kind of well because I like how I explain neutralization and how it should look because this is where you'll actually pick this up. Typically, um, if you do not neutralize correctly, you can get overprocessed hair or if you over neutralize, you can actually overprocess the hair because the neutralizer needs to be rinsed out. So overprocessed hair, um, don't think that if you overprocess a perm, it'll be extra curly. You'll be shocked to learn that overprocessed hair is technically 
um, a thiol relaxer, if you really think about it scientifically, because in a perm, we're breaking at least 50% of the bonds. If we're using a thiol relaxer, what we're doing is we're breaking more than 50. We want to break about 60 to 70 or 70 to 80, if you're on the riskier side, of the bonds to make the hair straight. Because if too many bonds are broken, the hair can't hold the curl, and what happens is it becomes very limp. Further processing of the hair will make it frizzier, drier, and straighter, not shiny, glossy, and curly. So the hair will be too weak to have a curl. Um, also know that the hair at the scalp is stronger, and what they mean by that is that the hair on her scalp has not seen as much chemical damage as everything else, so what you might see is the hair being curlier up here and then limper as you go down. Um, know that um, additional processing will make it straighter. So that's why what your, your best bet is to do is cut the ends off, wait for it to grow in healthier, and then uh, process accordingly when the hair is in a much better condition. One of my good friends, Aura May, who's an amazing educator for the ABCH, she does a corrected perm and her methods are incredible. So the next type of issue that we run into um, is under-processed hair. As the title suggests, it's the exact opposite. If you don't break enough bonds, the hair will not be able to rebond where it can hold the curly shape. So what happens is the hair will be softened and the curl has a very weak curl, but it can also be straight since the hair at the scalp is stronger. Under-processed hair is straighter at the scalp and curlier at the ends. If the hair is under-processed, processing it will make it curlier, but be very careful because if you already put one chemical on it and you're going to do another abrasive chemical, it can only mean the difference like that between the hair to be um, perfectly processed and over-processed. So what normally what you should do is let them go home, wait about a week. If you're going to be very safe, two weeks, have them come back and then try it again. So we already talked about neutralization. Um, my mistake of going that far, I don't know how I made that mistake. I am sorry. I do apologize. What I do want to bring your attention to is make sure you check out this really cool chart. If you guys already have your book and you're reading that chart, um, you can you know end it here, take your five minute break. But what I want to do is just go over the you know types of perms and what they recommended um, the hair for. They recommend using your alkaline cold wave, exothermic wave on coarse, thicker, resistant hair. They recommend using your true acid wave for extremely porous or very damaged hair. If you can get true acid wave and a thiofree wave, like the true system from Revlon, go that route. Your acid balance wave, they recommend on porous or damaged hair. Your ammonia free wave and your thiofree wave, they recommend using it on porous to normal hair. Your low pH wave, they recommend for normal, fine, or damaged. Well, that's your handy dandy perm chart. Sometimes um, I quiz you guys on that. I know on your send gauge, they do have activities on there, so make sure you're doing those activities. Um, and then what I'm going to do next is when we get back, I'll talk about different types of um, perm wraps. And we're going to start getting into, um, you know, we'll talk about perms for men, precautions, and if we have time, we'll go into relaxers.